Hey, God bless you, my friend. This is Sister Sharon. Today, I want to take my time to bring caution to men, women, so-called followers of Jesus, so-called prophetess and apostles, and all of you people who attempt to harass and bully women who have been called into Jesus Christ's harvest. There is an epidemic like never before of those who are falling away from the faith and those who, like myself, we have had an encounter with God through Christ and we have spent time with him and divinely he chose us to come forth and in my case, it was against my will. I personally, and I have said this many times on different videos, I wanted nothing to do with YouTube and social media. I was living my life very quietly, exhorting, encouraging, motivating people I come in contact with. I've done this since I met Jesus. YouTube is not the totality of my ministry, my friends. I have been ministering since I met Jesus. And let me tell you, my friends, there are some of you, you are miserable because you have allowed people, teachings of men, doctrines of demons, men and women who are unlearned, who do not divide rightly, rightly divide the scriptures, and they harass and they cause your heart to be troubled. Let me help you, beloved. The word of God is Jesus. Let me say that again. The living word is Jesus. Masses of people take scripture and they use the scriptures to harm you and to put you in fear of speaking up and speaking out. Who do you actually think is behind any doctrine that tells you you cannot exhort, teach, or preach? Who do you actually think in modern day Christendom is going to proof text scripture? They will take the writings of Paul which are the most controversial scriptures in Christendom, and tell a woman she is going to go to hell for preaching, teaching, and exhorting. I tell you whose agenda it is, the devil's. How is it possible for anyone that is a sincere student and we become like the Bereans. We search the scriptures, friends. When you rightly divide scripture, when you understand audience, who was the writer talking to, what was going on, there is no way possible that you could come away from the scriptures and believe that in the 21st century that Jesus does not send out his disciples. I personally, my friends, was a disciple of Christ. I spent years alone with God, studying scripture, not to be heard, not to be seen. Simply, my friend, I studied scripture because I wanted to know who was Jesus. I am preparing to read to you this email that came from a young man named Jason. Jason wrote me this email. By the way, 31% of those who watch my videos on YouTube are men. 31%. Many of these men send donations to my ministry for Christ. And if it wasn't for many of the men that have donated to my ministry, it would have been very difficult for me, friends, to end up in ministry full time, bringing you these exhortations every single day. People hear me today. This is what Jason wrote to the ministry, and he is one of countless men who have wrote to me and Charity, who also 
uh, reads the e incoming emails that we sometimes, friends, I'm slam just reading your emails. But this is from Jason. My name is Jason Wynn, and I did ask Jason for permission to read this email. My name is Jason Wynn. Last December 2018, I came out of a cult that used a form of godliness as a cloak. When the Holy Spirit began to draw me out, I had nowhere to go, no one who understood or even knew how to help me. I didn't know how to fight spiritually, and everyone thought I was crazy. I was alone and under some heavy mind control, and, uh, and the spiritual attack was extremely brutal, brutal. Excuse me. I was seeking God diligently and begging for help. Then I came across your ministry. I will go as far to say that God used your ministry to even save my life. That's the severity of what I was up against. All I had were your videos, teachings, and exhortations that grew me and kept me going for months. I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my soul. Thank you. Thank you for your obedience in the Lord, your tireless work for the kingdom, your love for truth and the saints, and your drive to keep going in him. I wouldn't have made it this far without you. I do covet your prayers going forth. You know the battle never stops. I pray this small donation blesses you and God multiplies it for his kingdom. God bless you and God bless you and yours mightily, Sister Sharon. Listen, friends, I receive emails like this constantly from men all over the world. Because when it's said and done, inside of our bodysuit, is a soul. And that is what Jesus Christ came to this earth, died a horrific death to set our souls free from the chains of bondage and sin. It was Jesus that said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 15, who lights a candle and hides it under a bush? YouTube, my friend, is not church. YouTube is not church. We do not take communion. We do not baptize anyone. We do not sing praises together. None of us, friends, we do not have communion. All things are not common on YouTube. That's what a church, quote, fellowship is supposed to do. All things are to be common. We sing praises to God. People are baptized. We take communion. We pray one for another. We don't do none of that because you know why? YouTube is not church. I'm going to say it again. YouTube is not church, friends. It is a platform where anyone, including atheists, ungodly people, can come up on this platform, make all the videos they want. But God has saw fit to send messengers like myself to help people like Jason. Listen and hear me very closely, my friends. Women cannot usurp authority over a man who has free will. No one forces you all to listen to my videos. No one forces you to listen to any female. This is the 21st century, friends. You have a free will. We do not force. We do not take any prisoners. 31% of regular viewers of my channel I have said it. They are men. And I do not force anyone. It's whosoever will that want to listen. You don't have to listen to us. You do not have to glean, hear one word that's being spoken. The scriptures tell us that Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10, Martha was busy. Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. And she started complaining to Jesus. Why don't you tell Mary to get up and help me? Jesus said, no, Martha, 
you should be doing like your sister. Come and sit at my feet and learn. And many of us are just like Mary. We have sat at the foot of Jesus. We know what he has said. We know the way that is straight and narrow. And when he sees fit, he sends whoever he wants to. It's his harvest. The scriptures tell us that one of the first home churches in the New Testament was oversaw seen, excuse me, managed by Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla and Aquila were a couple who lived, worked, and traveled with Paul, the same one that wrote the letter to the church in Ephesus telling Timothy that he suffers not a woman to be teaching. This was correct. There was no scriptures, my friend. There was no study Bibles. There was no read along. There was no point of reference. Paul had been with Jesus and was bringing the gospel to these cities where women were, it, as we understand it, standing up in these services. These women were very provocative. There was even instruction about how they were dressing. Friends, this was applicable and it was correct for that time. This is what he told Timothy, friends, and it was correct. But it is the same Paul who was with Priscilla and Aquila where the scriptures tell us that Priscilla and Aquila taught Apollos, Acts chapter 18, a more excellent way. The scripture is clear. Priscilla helped teach this apostle, this one that was being sent out, Apollos, a more excellent way. Friends, it is Paul, it is the writer of Romans chapter 16 that is clearly telling the brethren to salute and to take care of Phoebe, who was a female in the gospel. It was Jesus who was prepared for his burial by a woman who broke her alabaster box and began to wash our Savior's feet. Women have always been with Christ. Do you actually believe that Jesus Christ the Savior, the Redeemer, the one who commissioned his disciples to go and preach to the world, go into all the world and make disciples. Do you actually think that Jesus would send a woman to hell because she has set herself apart. She has sat at his feet. She has learned the way of the kingdom. Yes, we can be loud. We can be brash at times, but he knows our heart is for redemption. I will not attempt to labor on in this exhortation. But I caution every last one of you who keep harassing and bullying women, discouraging them to cease helping men like Jason, who, beloved, I had no idea God had led him to this channel. He listened at his own will. Woe to all of you who discourage harvesters, deliverers, because that's what you're called to be. All of you who have sat with Jesus, you are called to let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and they glorify God. All the glory belongs to God. The harvest belongs to Jesus. Have mercy on all of you who throw 
your stumbling blocks, who refuse to rightly divide the scriptures, who refuse to listen to Jesus, who refuse to even get in the harvest. Many of you that throw these darts, you're not even in the harvest. Women of God, arise. Eternity is forever and eternity is final. Many of you, like myself, have laid down your life. Shake the dust. Do not cease working this great harvest. Masses of men just like Jason. Masses of women all over this globe are waiting to hear what God has put in your heart. Preach that word in and out of season. The word preach simply means to proclaim. The word teach simply means to exchange knowledge, to edify and to explain. That's all that a teacher is, one who helps give explanation. In this case of the awesome revelation of Jesus Christ, he or she that has an ear to hear, God bless us all, especially those who are carrying the torch, the flame of Jesus Christ. The Redeemer of the entire world. Till next time, my friends. God bless us all.